Did you come? Did you come? Did you come down to Birmingham specifically to cause trouble? I see trouble. And did you see much football? Never seen any. Never seen the park. How many fans were were actually very very drunk? I can't tell you. We've never seen all of you. Never. You only came after Boston and thrown in jail. You must have done something to be thrown in jail. I ran into a post. The Villa fans were chasing us. We ran into a post and the jail just. Who was the big riot? Who was the boy with the shorty scarf then? He was the first one to invade the park. Well, Saturday morning, about say seven o'clock onwards, when the coaches started to arrive on the uh, Villa Ground calf, uh, coach park, they started then, they took milk from the milkman, from the local milkman, they took bread off them, they played football with the bread, they broke, the, they took the bottles, they broke the bottles, they threw them through windows, and then after that, instead of using the, any toilet they could find, they, they used the, people's letter boxes as toilets. Then they started running up and down the streets, and there was running fights in every street. We were backing onto the railway. They were running along the back of the railway with pickaxes, anything they could get hold of. There was running fights at the back. They were standing, throwing bricks to the windows at the back. And then about two o'clock, it went very quiet because they all went in the match. Then the match was abandoned, as you know, right? Now, our children not been allowed out all day. From seven o'clock in the morning, our children were kept in. So I said to my own two boys, this lad, another laddie from across the road, you can play in my front room, right, where we know where you are. They were playing in the front room. They came out of the match and they stood along the palings over here and they used it as a, a urinal and then they stood in the street exposing themselves and when I say exposing themselves, I mean exposing themselves little girl here with a little teeny sister coming up from an aunt's up the road all the children in the street were in the same position that these men, they, well they weren't men, they were animals right? Have you ever seen anything like this before? We've had trouble before, we always have trouble, and it's not just a Rangers match, we have trouble every match. It's about every second Saturday. Every second Saturday we get it. It's not long ago I brought two little boys, 13 year old, from Chesterfield, off the railway bank being chased by Villa fans, and the one little boy got his arm split from here to here, and I had to bandage it up for him and send for the police who took him to the hospital and then escorted him to the railway station to put him on the train. What are you all doing about it then? What, well, what can we do about it? it? You get people like Ellis uh, says, once they're outside the villa ground, there's nothing he can do about it. You never see your MP unless he's, he's canvassing for votes, right? But people are not going to put up with this. We're going to start barricading our streets and do, and we'll do something. Somebody's got to do something. We've had enough. I would entirely agree with him. I think that this uh, behaviour is totally unacceptable. It's a mob rule, really brought about, as I say, by alcoholic intake and uh, ordinary decent people are entitled to go to football matches or to live within the vicinity of football grounds without this problem. And uh, all I would say to them is that the Home Secretary and I are absolutely determined to do everything we can um, to eliminate this evil from our society. But it's a very, very deep-seated evil, may I say. It doesn't start and end with football. Indeed, it's nothing to do with football. Football is just the... Uh, medium which is used in, in order to, uh, to, to enjoy this antisocial uh, rave-up, I would call it.